Now, there are thought to be about 2,000 European-born militants fighting alongside Islamic State, and around 400 are estimated to have come from Great Britain. Now, British nationals have publicly uh, been among the most vehement supporters of the Islamic State group. Let's now take a look at what some of them have said and done. Just last week, a British rapper joined the Islamic State in Syria and posted a photo of himself holding a severed head on Twitter. Now, over a month ago, twin sisters and medical students followed their elder brothers to join the organization as well. And a Brit fighting in Syria threatened to take the terror to London and perform public executions in Trafalgar Square. And then early this year, UK police arrested former Syrian fighters when they arrived back home. And there was also a former British engineering student who said in an interview he was very happy to join the jihad. And perhaps the most wanted British terror suspect is Samantha Luthwaite, also known as the White Widow. She's believed to be behind a string of attacks in Kenya, including last September's assault on Nairobi's Westgate Mall that killed at least 67 people. Known as the main recruiter of al-Qaeda in East Africa, she's on the run and believed to have undergone plastic surgery to avoid capture. Expert on British military policy Dan Glazerbrook blames Britain's domestic policy for pushing Muslim men to join the Islamic State. If you look how Muslims have been treated in this country, they've been alienated and um, demonized um, uh, and scapegoated actually by the British media and politicians um, uh, since the beginning of the so-called war on terror. They've been turned into a suspect community um, whose houses can be raided, they can be thrown in prison without charge, etc., etc creating anger and frustration amongst young Muslims in Britain and then um, in encouraging them to leave Britain and go and fight in Syria. These are all creations of the British government and, and, and its allies in the media. So it's at the height of cynicism. And then when they return, of course, they're criminalized and demonized once again, having been fated as freedom fighters um, originally. Then when they return, they're criminalized and demonized again. So it's, it's a very, very cynical um, policy 